Hi everyone, just wanted to make a quick short video uh, to show you how to measure the power output of an amplifier. Now this is a Kenwood uh, KA3500. Uh, it was released in 1977, this particular one. I'm sure I could figure out when it was made, but I, I really don't care. But this unit as a model came out in 1977. So what you want to do in order to get this all started is that you're going to need some dummy loads. These dummy loads are 300 watt, 8 ohm. The bigger that you get, the better. Uh, that way you just have a wide variety of what you can test with these specific resistors. I would like to upgrade to 1000 watt at some time. Anyways, I've got this hooked up to the uh, scope there and also hooked up to the amplifier. And we can go here. So after you've worked on the amplifier, uh, this was brought to me in rough shape. And basically the two power capacitors had to be replaced because the other ones were just gone. Uh, everything else, all the other capacitors, they seem to measure up fine. The customer doesn't want to spend a whole bunch of money, you know, replacing all the caps and everything. So he said just to leave it. So as long as it works, he's happy. So that's what we're dealing with. After you've had that running for a bit, you want to check your biases and your offsets. Then you can hook it up to a scope. You're going to put a sine wave into it from a signal generator, uh, one kilohertz. Let me just turn this down and we'll start from scratch. Okay, so what you want to do is as soon as you turn the unit on, Turn the volume up slowly and watch, I'll show you. So there's our waveform there and there are just triggered. So what you're looking for is where the sine wave starts to clip. So right there, see the bottom? That's a nice sine wave. That's clipping on the bottom, but only the bottom on both channels. So that's basically the maximum for this amplifier before it starts to distort the output. So what you want to do is this is this has got one of those clicky volumes. So you kind of have to, if you want an accurate reading, I'm just going to leave it there. So what you want to look at here is at the bottom, you'll see it's 46.4.8. I'm going to say 46.8 volts because it's kind of flipping around there. So what you want to do with that information is you want to take it into handy dandy calculator right over here. And what you can do, let me just zoom out here. So you got 46 point, oops, 46.8. Now that is voltage peak to peak. Now to order a fine VRMS when you have a peak to peak voltage is you have to multiply it by 0.353. So you take that figure, multiply 0 0.353 equals 16.52. So that's your, your VRMS voltage right there. Now, in order to find the power output for this amplifier in terms of watts, what you have to do is you got to take that 16.52. So let's just do this. So let's clear that 16. Let's just say 16.5. And then you square it. 272. Now you're going to divide it by the load, which is 8 ohms. Divided by 8. So 34.03. You can see there. So that means that this unit per channel right now is capable of delivering 34 watts per channel. Now, this unit is pretty old. Most of the stuff is stock inside of it. So I'm going to say 34 out of a total of what is supposed to be 40 watts per channel, not too bad. Now, if we replaced all the caps and all the transistors that need to be replaced, you'd probably get a lot closer to 40. But for now, 34 volts, not too bad for parts in it that are older than basically, well, almost as old as me. It's only two years younger than me. So that's a quick video, how to find the power output of an amplifier. Hope you guys liked this video. I'll be back shortly with some more polished videos for you guys in due time. Thanks to all the new subscribers. Like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you later.